This is the new Audi A3 Saloon, and it's basically a posher version of the A3 Sportback. Because as we all know, a traditional saloon booty is a lot more appealing than a hatchback's flat arse. Hmm. Yeah, see? Anyway, here's the Colway Top 10 Things You Need to Know About It. From the front, the A3 Saloon looks identical to the Sportback, obviously. That means it's got the same really wide grille, which sort of reminds me of one of these. The best angle of the car is, of course, the side profile because it's just sleeker than the hatchback. Also, it kind of reminds me of an A4 that's been put in a wash and then tumble dried and shrunk, but in a good way, not a oh my god, I just couldn't read my expensive sweater kind of way. Also, Andy claimed that some of the surfacing on the doors, which does look cool, was inspired by the design of the Lamborghini Countach. Thing is, though, I, I don't really see that at all. Do you? Round the back, you've got a traditional saloon boot, which looks good. Then there's some tail lights, which look good as well. And finally, there's the fact there are no fake exhaust pipes, which of course is really, really good. And it says another Lamborghini has helped inspire the A3's interior. This time though, it's the Urus. I can see it in the vents around the steering wheel. Can you? Click on the pop out banner up there to vote if you agree with me, or you think I've gone completely. That gave me a headache. Audi has copied another car manufacturer, only this time it's Porsche and their gear selector. You see the automatic versions of the S3 Saloon have all these stubby little ones, like in the 911. Other than that, it's classic Audi. So you've got lots of soft touch materials about the place, shiny bits and pieces and some metallic trim. And then S-Line versions are upgraded with some interior ambient lighting. There's Alcantara and of course some S-Line badging on the steering wheel and sports seats. Let's talk about length. The A3 Saloon is actually 15 centimetres longer than the A3 Sportback, but all that extra length is packed into its rear end. Ooh. The distance between its front and rear wheels is actually identical to the hatchback version, and seeing as that dimension is what governs a car's interior space, it's pretty safe to say that the A3 Saloon will have the same rear leg room as the A3 Sportback. And when I tested that car's practicality in the rear, knee room was good. Thing is though, headroom probably won't be so good because the Saloon has a slightly sloping rear roof line. So yeah, I'm gonna have to wait until I get in the car to test it to see if it's acceptable. It is in the boot where you really feel the benefit of the saloon's extra length. Matron, please. Oh, come on now. Can we stop this absolute nonsense? It's childish and puerile. Who the heck is writing this rubbish? That's me, isn't it? Anyway, sorry. You get 425 litres of luggage capacity, which is 45 more litres than you get with the hatchback versions. Ideal for all your extra litre carrying requirements. Now we come to the engine choices. Don't switch off, I promise to make this super exciting. You ready? Okay, so there is a one litre three cylinder turbo petrol with 110 horsepower, or a 1.5 litre turbo petrol four cylinder with 150 horsepower, or you can have a two litre diesel with 116 horsepower, or one with 150 horsepower. See, that wasn't too bad. It's actually quite interesting, wasn't it? Now I managed to achieve that by using a clever subliminal editing trick. Could you spot it? If you did, uh, let me know what it was in the comments below. You can get the A3 Saloon with either a six-speed manual or seven-speed automatic gearbox. The auto versions of the petrol come with mild hybrid technology. That means they have a little electric motor bolted onto the engine which can start the car, allow it to coast without the engine even being on, and give it a little bit of a boost when you're accelerating to help make the whole engine be a bit more efficient. The motor can actually work in reverse when you're slowing down to recoup lost energy. There's no point having a futuristic looking cabin if your infotainment system looks like a mobile phone from the late 1990s. Thankfully, the Audi A3 Saloon has a state-of-the-art system, so you've got a 10-inch central touchscreen and then a 10-inch digital driver's display, all as standard. Though for some reason, Audi doesn't give you built-in satellite navigation as standard. Classic Audi, they always find a way to stitch you up, the sneaky buggers. 
At least the card does come with built-in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so you can just use your Google Maps instead and sod them. Now, Audi being Audi, they will, of course, let you swap some of your spare monies for even more tech in the form of the Cockpit Plus. And then you have a full 12 inches to play with. Sorry. Anyway, to give you an idea of how much bigger that is, it's the same size as a Subway. No, not that one. This one. If you really want to blow the budget, you can swap even more of your monies for a heads-up display. Then you don't even have to bother to look down at that bigger display you've just paid extra for. Genius. Underneath the skin, the A3 Saloon is pretty much identical to the A3 Sportback, apart from the fact they've given it slightly stiffer suspension. If you go for the S-Line version, you actually get stiffer suspension still, and it's lowered by 15 millimeters, so it should feel more agile than the standard car, but not quite so good over bumps. Then there's the S3 version, which gets an even sportier setup to complement its 333 horsepower, two litre turbocharged petrol engine. Now, in case you're wondering, that isn't the car's paint scheme. It's still partially camouflaged because Audi hasn't fully revealed the car yet. You see, they're trying to eke out as much coverage for it as possible. Depending on which version of the A3 saloon you go for, you will be able to upgrade it with some optional adaptive dampers. And they'll let you be able to switch between a softer, more comfortable setting or a stiffer, sportier setting of the suspension. And you'll be able to do that at the press of a button when you're driving. All right, let's talk cold, hard cash. So the new Audi A3 saloon will start from around £25,000. Though that won't be for one that you'd actually want. A car you'd want will probably cost more like £30,000. And one that you'd really, really want with some extra options and stuff, that's going to cost around £35,000. So it's really important to make sure you're paying a fair price. And you can do that by clicking on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow to compare offers on the Audi A3 Saloon or any car for that matter. Or just Google CarWow if you want to do it that way. It's your choice. I don't mind. Audi has designed the A3 Saloon to be as slippery as an Italian. Ciao. No, not that Italian. This Italian. Ciao, bella. To do that, they've given it some aerodynamic enhancements. For instance, the slats in the grille could shut when the engine doesn't need cooling to help reduce drag. There's some special vents in the front bumper which feed air into the wheel arches so that it reduces the turbulence caused by the spinning wheels. And then there's some flat underfloor cladding which helps smooth airflow beneath the car. So then, what is the result of all this? I don't hear you cry. Well, it means the Audi A3 Saloon has a drag coefficient of 0.25 CD, which will mean absolutely nothing to you unless you're an engineer. Ultimately, it means that the car is more aerodynamic than the hatchback version and about the same as the super slinky Porsche Taycan. Oh yeah, that's impressive actually. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that Porsche, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch the video. Do I look like I'm not enjoying myself? Safety is always important, and the new A3 Saloon comes with lots of safety kit as standard. They're the really good stuff you're going to have to pay extra for. You're spotting a theme here, guys. For instance, while you get auto emergency braking as standard on the car, if you want the clever cruise control which can steer to keep you in lane and will keep you a safe distance from the car in front, you know, the kind of thing you get as standard on every single Toyota Corolla, well, on the Audi, you have to pay for it, of course. Another feature you may want is something called Car 2 X. Now, sadly, that doesn't mean it will play X hamster on the infotainment screen. I actually have no idea what X hamster is. I don't like this. Oh, I've revealed earlier that I do. Anyway, what it actually means is that the car can talk to infrastructure. But don't worry, it doesn't mean that the car will like start dissing you to a passing lamppost, say like your driving is really, really bad. What it does is means that the car can communicate with things like traffic lights, so it can tell you if the traffic light is about to turn to red, so you can back off the throttle to help save fuel. Clever, huh? Finally then, we come to the headlights, and this is an area where Audi has always L-E-D the way. You get it? L-E-D? Lead? I don't know why bother. You can get the car with some really high-tech matrix LEDs and they can actually project a bit like a cinema, an animation when you get in and out of the car. And if you want to see me actually having a play with that system on the Audi e-tron Sportback, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch my video. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? I've never seen that before on a car. 
I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Now, if you want to watch more videos, then just click down there. You can go watch them now. Or if you want to see how much money you can save on a car and get our free Car Wow app, just click over there. You'll be able to download it. It's quite cool. And like I said, it's free. So obviously, it's not done by Audi because they charge you extra for that. Ha 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 ha.